Hello everyone, <coughs> welcome back to the Brotherhood. So we are at round three now. Um, on the right we have a Madolch player, and on the left hand side we have a, another Stell Knight player. There's a big turnout of Stell Knights at this tournament. Um, and one that is certainly an interesting one to see, because it is also very nice. So straight away we start off with the Mufali and go into the um, Messenger Lata to search out the ticket. So he's playing that ticket and setting a face down and passing. So it's going to be a very interesting one to see. Star Knights are another rank 4 base deck um, with Madolch kind of the same. Obviously they have a little bit more of a different variant. Um, but it'd be interesting to see if either or are playing the hands, because the hands are always a problem. So we summon with Altair, and that looked like a mystical space typhoon. So Altair summoning. So he's just an MS team, and what a huge hit that was. Hitting that solemn warning was very, very, very big. So that is a very nice hit for the opponent, uh, well, for the Madolch player. So he has some interesting plays. Um, he's just having a think, seeing what he can access in his graveyard, uh, in his extra deck. Um, so he has uh, Instant Fusion, uh, Dark Hole, and another Mufoy. He's playing the Instant Fusion to take the 1,000 life points. And that is a pretty standard play um, to summon out the Fusionist, um, which is probably going to go into an Invoker, um, because Invoker will then uh, be able to special summon um, and another um, another Messenger Lata, um, which will just open him up to more rank 4 plays. And there's the Nova. Nova there is quite big, and he gets to draw a card, but he still has that Messenger Lata on 1600 attack. So he's going to take the 16 there. Um, as you heard him, you, saw, you didn't hear him unfortunately, <laughs> but um, he, he just happily took that. So that puts him on 6-9 um, there. 6-1, sorry. I am being stupid today. Uh, not 6-1 at all. Of course it isn't 6-1, because he's not boosted up by anything. So basically he is on... Um, Sorry, I am being very stupid there. So he's Phoenix Wind blasting it back to the deck. Um, and that's quite interesting because he's got Vega out. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Mm, I wouldn't. Because he obviously has got activating tickets effect, so he's got Angeli. Um, it's interesting. It's very interesting. So, the Telenite player now, um, looking at his graveyard, um, as you can see, they're not exactly um, um, they're not exactly, um, you know, sorry, I do apologise, this is a um, slight delay, just as I check what the actual attack of the monster is, um, I now know it's 1,200. Uh, So he's on 5,800 life points there. <laughs> so he's searching on another new fully. He's got another instant fusion in his hand. This could get interesting. So he's just passing turn there, obviously. Uh, and he's summoned the Altair. So the Altair is going to summon that. Altair is a 1-7 beat stick. So he is going to take that. For the 17. Um, so he leaves him on 4-1. Isn't it a burn when you edit the wrong fucking thing? <laughs> Very nice. So he's going to overlay um, into any number of possibilities, really. Um, because... 
it's difficult to play against Madotch because they're just such a tricky deck at times. And even though some people might not actually like them, they are still a very tricky deck. And I feel that it's it's just a difficult decision, especially when they don't really have anything. Um, so he's going to go into Ragnar's era. So that is in preparation for the Chateau that may or may not come out. He doesn't have the Chateau though. So that's quite a questionable play, if you do ask me myself. There are other options that he could have done. Um, looking at his deck list here, he um, he does have a lot of different things. Uh, he could use the Abyss Dweller, um, but obviously he might get run over if there is a Chateau there. Um, he could have obviously used King of the Paralymps as well, which is also in his uh, side deck, uh, his extra deck, um, to just get out of the Kage to Kage. But so now we have the Dinep, and the Dinep is going to attempt to activate its effect. And he's going to bottomless that. Um, let's see. So he does have a compulsion. And he has the wire tap. The wire tap sends it back to the deck. So that is a very interesting thing there. So we saw that he has the compulsory evacuation device face down. So the Talonite does have that in his uh, at his disposal. Um, so he searches out the altar. So as you know, move fully only has 500 attack, so it might get punched in the face here for 1,900 from Ragnar Zero, but he's not going to. So he's taking um, a bit of a beating there, um, and I believe that he has 1,800 attack. Um, so into the Mufili, that will be 1-5 damage. And there is that Dark Hole. That Dark Hole is pretty, pretty big. Um, it means that he can now try and activate... Oh, but even there, see, there's the Compulsory Evacuation Device once more. But it does mean that Ticket's effect goes off and he's going to get another Mufoli. It's certainly interesting. So today we have seven rounds and then the top eight are also going to be uh, featured. So he's just passing that off there. And he has also drawn a Dark Hole of his own. So he's going to check in his graveyard. I didn't catch uh, anything else that was in his hand. Um, but it certainly is interesting. He's got the Altair, which is quite a nice card there. So Altair is going to special summon. I do believe this could possibly be interesting because he's going to try and attack here for game because he has enough life points on board to kill him. <coughs> but whether or not he actually does it, if he fears any back row, it's the last game, yeah. So the Stell Knight takes a game one. So it's a pretty pretty basic game, game one. Um, the Madodge player just couldn't get off the ground. Um, there was not much he could really do, to be honest. Um, but that's that's just life, isn't it? So that is uh, the game one. We will reset now to game two while they side. And um, I do have a burger here that has been tempting me ever since I, uh, ever since I sat down. <laughs> um, and it's just something that I have to deal with. Unfortunately, this is what I get for streaming. So I'm going to take a break now to eat it.
So here we are now. We have game two of the first, <clears throat> the, the third round of this Brotherhood event. Um, it is slightly annoying me. The camera is offset. Oh dear, oh dear. So if we look at the Tell Knight's hand, we have a reinforcement to the army, a wiretap. I think that was also a fiendish chain. Um, if we look at the Madolch hand, there is a ticket, and that's all I saw. <laughs> um, but the Tell Knight is going first. So it's past turn because Madolch can actually go off a little bit under your opponent. So it's not too bad. So he searches out the Vega there. Which also gives away as to what will be in his hand. So the Vega is summoned to to ditch the, uh, the net. It's certainly going to be interesting. So he has the wiretap again, which is always great to open up with the wiretap. And he has three back row, one of which we know of. I need to run MST. And he has five back row, wow. So there might be an MST here. No, there is a call the horns of the Danette, so that is quite interesting. So he's now going to search out a card. That is not a Vega, apologies, that is a Unic. I just realized. <laughs> Silly me. Still getting used to the deck. So he summons another to try and foolish another card, possibly. And TT, that is a huge transfer tribute. His effect still will go off, but TT, negging your opponent there, that is very nice. It's a nicely played transfer tribute there. You might think that the Talonite player might not have needed to do that. He could have sat back on his laurels and attacked to see what was going on and then possibly um, then possibly decided to try and make some plays where he would have probably got TT'd again. But it does mean that he would have possibly wasted his opponent's resources. And that is a great draw, the Magellan there. Magellan is going to search out possibly the Mufali or it might just be an Angeli. Um, but a Hooke is also a possibility, but he goes for the Angeli in the end. Looking at his grave, the Hootcake probably wouldn't have been the best option anyway, thinking about it, because he only has a Torrental Tribute, so he has no monsters in his grave. So Angeli is going to attack there for 1,400. So he's going to call the Haunted in the end phase of his opponent's turn. Alter Ani, he has MST'd it. So they're just talking about how it works at first, the way that it'll <laughs> he's trying to wiretap a spell card, that is interesting there. That is a unfortunate thing, but he's also now given away that he has a wiretap face down. So the Unic is there now, which has 1,800 attack, but he's just leaving it on board, and that is a great card to draw, but unfortunately... He can't really use it. So it was actually Vega um, that he summoned. Vega only has 1,200 attack. Um, so he will take some further damage there. 300 life points to be precise. That's another call of the haunted. He's really, really wanting to get this Altair effect. If any Max sees, so he's going to draw two there, which is a very nice for his opponent, for the Madolch player, and his effect to search out as well. Can he maybe activate anything here in the end phase to break through there? But he's he's going to activate the wire tab. He has completely tricked him, because now we know that the Madolch player actually has a light imprisoning mirror face down. Um, and that's huge. Um, the chances are of that other one being a wiretap is quite low. Um, 
he does play the two wide up, but I just don't think it's going to help him if he. I would wait. Yeah, he's, so he's going to wait because there's no reason to actually activate the um, light imprisoned mirror just yet. But as we speak, he might activate it. So he's thinking about exceed, making an exceed play. There are a lot of different things you can use. Um, but he's just decided to summon another Altair. And this would be a great time to activate the Light Imprisoner Mirror. There it is. And he has the Alpha to deal with the Light Imprisoner Mirror. And he also gets to draw a card. The Alpha is a great, great card. So he searches out the UNK there, ditches the burn bitch, which is Alshan. So he's possibly thinking about burning his opponent. Um, the Madage player hasn't actually taken any life points whatsoever, any damage, but I do believe he's probably going to at this moment in time. So he's going to take 200 there. Oh, he's going to take 300, sorry, that is my fault. So I believe he did take another 17 attack. Um, as I said, it's very difficult for me to see everything. And I will occasionally miss things, but that is a solemn warning right there. That is a great play, um, and really, really does hurt the opponent. Um, so yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't actually. He can be solemn warning. <laughs> I think that's what they were talking about. Um, solemn warning just stops all and everything. There is no way around solemn warning. So he's hammering the Phoenix Chain there, and here's the new fleet, and he's going to special summon the Flying Sea, which is an interesting one. Because he can still actually make some plays. So he's going for the hoot kick. The, the hoot kick effect is going to kick in to banish the possible Angeli. Yes, the Angeli. To special summon, which is no doubt going to be Messengerlato. Messengerlato is going to activate its effect to search out the, the uh, chateau. And the chateau is going to be there activated. I don't believe there are any spell um the Madolch players in the grave so it won't triple anything back but this is going to hurt so in total he's going to take five thousand and that is and he's just scooping it up there um i do believe i miscalculated life points so i do apologize about that but um, you can obviously see everything because you're watching it. I'm doing about 10 different things. <laughs> There's no excuse, of course. No excuse. No one wants to do excuses. Um, but, yeah, so that is an interesting interesting game there. The Madolch player takes the round um, where the Stell Knight player took the first one. So, this is round three, the final round of this game. The game is round three. So, we open up with the Madoch player going first, searching with the Angeli. It's quite a nice, um, quite a nice opening. Um, and he's going to go into the hook kick. The hook kick will then activate his effect to banish the Angeli. Uh, as you can see, the Star Knight player has Nova, Honest, Altair, and two Altairs, and then I can't see what the other one is. So this is going to search out probably a Chateau, or a Ticket. 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 
ticket is played. Ah, oh, and it's because he has the Chateau in hand already. That's very useful. And he's just passing turn. I believe it's Chateau. Looks like it. Oh, possibly, yes. So the Stell Knights player is now over to him. So we have the Unka to actually ditch a card to the grave. But he does get bottom rest. He still gets the effect, but unfortunately that bottom rest has hurt him ever so slightly. So we are 21 minutes into this round. He's going to set the alpha, which is unfortunately at this point a bluff. Um, but he is going to switch into attack. He's going to activate the chateau. So they are now on 2,000. So that's, that is 6,100 damage on board. So yes, that's a fair bit of damage on board there. And bringing him down to 19,000 life points already. This could be a long game for the uh, Tell Knight player. There's not much that he can do in this moment in time. His hand isn't too awful. Um, but the ticket effect has come in with the Angeli, um, which a lot of people do forget about. But it's worked out perfectly for the Madolch player. He's drawn what looks like a reinforcement to the army there. That could just be what he needs. But the problem is, he only has monsters. And while he does have a uh, Honest in hand, it does make it difficult. Um, because he would I primarily like some back row. He does have the Alpha, and Alpha is going to help him. But there's only so much a Counter Trap can do. I believe that if he plays the Nova in the correct way, if he waits until he can actually do it, um, and waits until the Madolch player actually pushes, then that might be very useful. So here we have Vega to special summon Altair. He also activated um, Antigeko Takagi. And the opponent has dropped Maxi, which is going to make his hand very, very beefy and very nice. I'm just merely readjusting here, um, just adjusting my setup. Um, but now I have finished, so apologies for that if there was any background noise or anything that you did not want to hear. So as you can see, the uh, the Tell Knight player is making a fair few plays there. Um, unfortunately, my graphic is blocking out what he is doing. So there you go, so it's a Deb uh, Danette. Danette is overlaid with Kage. Um, which is going to bring out there's quite a few that you can bring out um, it's, it's just ah so he's going for Delta Ross Delta Ross is the choice so that is Del Knight Delta Ross there guys um, and Delta Ross does and he, ah, he drew the black horn a bit too late but Delta Ross um, is a very very good card um, and it means that there are going to be so many of his monsters now he can't respond to any of the uh, summons which is going to be very difficult for the Madolch player to actually get around however it's not that much of an issue right now so they're going to attack the Madolch player takes the first damage of the game um, by which he takes 200 course he does get the ticket search which is very nice so it's now the Madolch player's turn he has a lot of different a lot of different plays that he can make um, and he's going to start off with the Mufali but he's going to be instantly stopped 
and he's tributing the Deltaros. So as you've just seen, there are just some plays there. He tributed his own uh, Deltaros with the Alpha just to kick off some effects. And due to that, he now has another two monsters on the field with a search in hand from Danette. So you got to think, what can the Modolch player do? He has a very monster-heavy hand, unfortunately, um, and one that might bite him in the ass. I'm trying to work out what that trap is. Oh, it's the Blackhorn, um, which is still a great card, but unfortunately he's now open to a Assault. And this is where the Tal Knight player should possibly go all in here because there isn't much to lose at this point. He has 1,900 life points in game three, so the opponent's 7,800. He needs to really get in there and really take some damage out of his opponent. He does have two back row. We know what one of them is. The lowest down on the screen is the black corner heaven, but we don't unfortunately know what the other one is. So he's going to go for another Deltaros, and this is going to hurt. So that hurt there. I personally would have attacked first, but there's not much that can be said and done about that. So he's gone for the Vega there. So the uh, Altair into the Vega. And his trap card could be key. Denat is going to search. Now the question is, does he play three Delta Ross? And my answer to that is no, because I have his deck list. <laughs> so he doesn't have three Delta Ross. He has two. He has a ghost and a secret by the looks of it as well. So in total there, he has taken 3,200 damage, which is going to leave him on 4,600. So again, there are a lot of different options he can make. Um, he's looking at the Castell, but I don't think that would be the best one. Personally, I would quite like um, Constellar Omega could be a very interesting card to play against him um, but at the end of the day it's a very difficult choice mainly because Medolch, he, ha he knows that he has a lot of cards in his hand um, because he plays under the max C and um, he needs to think what's going to be the best thing to deal with all these Medolch monsters that are going to come out next turn so he could take a risk and not do anything so there is the risk. So leaving more monsters on board means that he is um, keeping the... Ah, so there we go, we have the Maxi. I believe that could be a Nova face down, uh, Alpha, sorry, face down, um, um, in which case he is leaving it open there. So he special summons the Lethally, uh, uses Lethally's effect to special summon the uh, Messenger Lato, who's going to get out the Chateau, and Chateau is going to activate, that's going to return everything to the deck. So he's entering the battle phase there. And Honest is dropped. That is pretty painful. So he's thinking now. Because that is pretty brutal in itself. 
Um, so he's going to take 2,100 down for me. So they were just working out the life points there. So you have to think that this could be the Talonite's final move to be able to secure his opponents. The face down was a call in the haunted, um, and the Madolch player needs to now think how can he best get around his opponent's monsters. Now, obviously, the best monster that Madolch have is the Tiaramasu, and Tiaramasu will help in a situation like this, but it's the fact that he needs to get to it. So it does look like he's going to go for that Constellar Omega there. Is there anything he can respond with? I don't think there is. So the Constellar Omega is locking him out with two back row. He's activating the effect. He's going to overlay again. For Hardline Drago. So this is causing a bit of a headache for the Madolch player here now. So he's now going to break through skill in because that would be game on board. So he, the reason for that is they were just saying that he activated the breakthrough skill prematurely um, and unfortunately that has locked him out of two back row. So this doesn't look good unfortunately for the Madolch player. I do believe that this is probably going to be game. Um, the Madolch player is just sat there and he's about to throw down his hand. So there we go. So the Madolch player couldn't do anything there. Unfortunately there was a misplay at the end of the duel. Um, but that was possibly due to miscommunication on both players' parts. But there isn't anything that can actually be done about that um, because it is the player's responsibility to talk and to communicate. If he was unsure, if the Madolch player was unsure about what um, step he was in, he, um, he should have clarified instead of activating the effect of the breakthrough skill. But that is round three, game three. Telenites take that. So the past rounds we have had Telenites versus uh, Chaos Dragons, Chaos Lightsworn that took the round, the Catalan Knights took the round. Then previous round we had the Gigia versus Yang Xing, and Yang Xing took that, and now Talon Knights have taken it again. So these new decks are taking a beating in the meta. They are beating down the opponents and having basically showing no mercy. So that is round three. Stay tuned for round four.